Hello, everybody, and welcome to Faith on Friday Extra. This series is all about highlighting inspirational people, engaging topics, and some really interesting jobs. And I'm your host, Ricky Smith. Y'all, okay, you know how I always try to find stuff that if I'm interested in it, I have to share it with you. So I today I have a, a military retired veteran who was in the army for 25 years, but his job in the military, he was a combat photographer. For those of you that know, it's a 25 victor. Yeah, right, I don't know. Y'all say hello to my friend, Kyron Adams. Hey, Kyron. Hey, how you doing, Ricky? I'm good, how are you? Hey, I'm doing just fine. Uh, first of all, Thank you for 25 years of military service. That's huge. And you just recently retired too, didn't you? Yes, but I'm trying to hide it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we all know what you did. But 25 yeah. years is a long time. So thank you so much for what you did for the country. So, Kyron, what the crap? Who is ever, I've never known anybody to be a combat photographer. Can you tell me a little bit about what that is actually? Exactly. So combat photographer, we are pretty much the historians of the army and also the Navy um, and Marines and Air Force, just DOD at large. So combat camera uh, goes uh, across all of the services, but me being an army combat photographer, I was part of the 55th Signal Company combat camera in Fort Meade, Maryland. Um, and you know, it, it was headquartered at different places, but it's it's headquartered right now at Fort Meade, Maryland. Okay. And basically our job is to hey, document history uh, without any skewed, without any bias and say, this is what it's like. Wow. So now you, with that, you've been all over the world, I'm sure, and seen some stuff that, was there anything that you've ever seen that you did not want to take the picture of, but you felt like you had to? Um. Not necessarily, you know, after a while you look at it, everything is just your job and your mission. So not necessarily that I didn't want to, but I'll probably say some things that I didn't care to take pictures of, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. And I like what you said, you all are the historians of the military. So now for those of us that were in the military, we all had to go to AIT, our, our advanced individual training. So mm -hmm. as a combat photographer, First of all, what was your AIT like? Where was it? And what did you do? <laughs> Look, my AIT was amazing. Um, and my AIT was actually in Pensacola, Florida. Okay. They tortured me and made me stay there for almost a year. You um, poor individual. <laughs> However, did you make it through? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know until to this day, I still don't know. <laughs> Yeah, so our training was uh, four and a half months of photo and uh, almost four and a half months of video. So you okay. had to learn both spectrums of capturing um, or documentary, documenting uh, history. Mm -hmm. So uh, I started in a dark room of all places. So wet processing, um, you know, okay. just like they do on TV, you put it in the water, you shake it, so on and so forth, hang it up. And then you go into the dark room, it's time to develop. So we went through we. I went from totally analog mm -hmm. and manual processing to this digital world that we live in now. Wow. And the same good. thing on the uh, video side. Okay. So we're, we're, yeah. I'm sorry, but I got to ask you this. So for those of us that went through AIT and, you know, and I was in Fort Jackson, South Carolina, so it was, ugh, it was a nightmare and it was hot. And <laughs> so, you know, we had weapons training. We had to go, you know, to do the bivouacs. We had the road marches we, and all that. Did you all as photographers have to do that stuff too or what? Yeah, actually, um, I'm going to one up everybody. We had to do all that and bring our camera gear. So <laughs> <laughs> so you, your Nikon, your M16, that was exactly. it. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And it was funny because I was in, uh, when uh, not jumping too far ahead, but when I was in Iraq, I actually had three weapons. Okay. I had my camera as a weapon. Mm -hmm. right? I had a M9 or nine millimeter okay. and an M16 where everybody else, they just had one weapon. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. So does the military issue you a camera or is it, you know, BYOC, bring your own camera? 
No, no, they issue uh, us a camera just like they do everything else. <laughs> really? Was it cameras or was it like, you know, here, take this Polaroid and have a nice day? <laughs> hey, no, it was, it was, it was everything you need to, uh, to accomplish your mission. They gave us the best equipment um, and, you know, and they, and, they, and they did a lot of testing. So we got equipment that, hey, it just broke down because it couldn't take a beating. Yeah. Um, and then you just find out uh, which equipment works best. Oh, my God. Now, you said, I, I love what you said, that it's headquartered someplace and there is a brigade of them. How many of them were you in the military? Do you know roundabout? Um, I would say um, when I was a specialist um, making sergeant, um, it was only a company size element. OK. Uh, and they have a reserve component, uh, which is in Fort Bragg. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the time, between all three MOSs, our career management field was 25 Victor, 25 Mike, and 25 Romeo. The Mikes were what we call combat Crayola. They did all the multimedia as far as graphics, websites, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, the Romeos are the repair people. So when we break it, they'll fix it. <laughs> and at the time, it was no more than 1,500 in the Army between wow. the whole CMF. Now, you know, it's going it, to, it's, it's more, um, but back then when I was like tracking numbers and saying, you know, uh, you know, how many of it, how many, how many of us are out there? It right. was only about 1500. Wow. That's crazy. Now I know a lot of people may be watching this and you know, we, in the military, we love our acronyms. So yeah. don't worry y'all. It's okay. If you don't understand what we're talking about, but you get the <laughs> gist of it. Okay. So, so there you are, you, this young man running around the world with a camera, a mm -hmm. nine and an M16, mm -hmm. taking pictures. When you all took those pictures, what did you do with them? Like, where did they go? You're, you're out in the field, you're taking pictures like we do on our phones, right? We're taking pictures. Are you emailing them, send them back, courier pigeon? Where were they going and how did they get there? At one point we were doing courier pigeon, uh, but I was <laughs> <laughs> So once we uh, take all these images, uh, we put them in the repository. Um, it used to be Divit as well. Today you can call it Divits. Um, uh, it used to be the Joint Combat Camera Center where they consolidated mm -hmm. everything and they push it to the Pentagon uh, and other places. So basically it was one giant repository where we would push all the images back to. And the way we used to get the information uh, from our camera back to the states whenever we were deployed or even when we were in the states was we had this high speed thing called an mr set it was basically a satellite in a box oh okay um, it was a satellite in a box so you had to download it to your computer hook your computer up to the mr set put the mr set on top of a, a, a humvee or something that was stable and tall and move the satellite around till you got a signal uh, mm. hopefully the signal didn't drop because you had to start all over um, oh but that gosh. was that was considered high tech equipment back in you know early two thousand. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course, as technology uh, you know got a lot better, you know you got other ways that you can send imagery safe and secure a lot faster. Yeah. But back then it was uh, yeah. Wow. Safe. And, and 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 prior to then it was it would take two or three soldiers to get things set up just to send back a few oh images. Because you know you know those of us who love TV. You know, we see these combat photographers, they're on the battlefield, they're just running around taking pictures, taking pictures. Was it really like that? See, you're laughing. So uh, was it really like that or not so much? Uh, I would say, I would say not so much like that. Now we are running around taking pictures on the battlefield, but wow. um, it's not staged, it's not as, uh, as pretty as Hollywood makes it, but it can be as austere and as mm -hmm. bad as Hollywood makes it. Oh, um, wow. The, the, the craziest thing that I heard prior to actually getting deployed into a real in, wartime environment was we had some people who were um, combat photographers in the 60s and 70s. They were mm -hmm. went to Vietnam and they told us, look, they had to do wet processing for, you know, special forces for just the wow. uh, normal troops support. And they told us they didn't even carry weapons back then. Mm. and they told us that if things got bad enough which kind of scared me said if things get bad enough there's going to be a weapon on the ground for you to pick up and use so oh they, didn't actually, they didn't actually start carrying weapons until 
a little bit, you know, they, you know, they had a, a, a sidearm, maybe a pistol, but they didn't start carrying long um, barrel rifles mm. um, until later on. So, wow. you know, things, things change over time, but they, hey, I can imagine back then. And they didn't even have body armor when they went out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. You think of how the battlefield has changed over yeah. the years anyway, and what was high tech then mm-hmm. to us looks incredibly archaic. And you wonder to yourself, how did anybody do anything out there? So fast forward, 25 years later, 25 you years are later. getting out of the military. Whoop, whoop. And <laughs> what does a combat photographer do when they retire? Um, they do whatever they want to do when they retire. You know, just... <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a man of 25 years in a uniform. Right. <laughs> right. So um, I will say in my case, um, a lot of people, um, after being in the career field so long, they don't care to carry that occupation over into the civilian sector mm-hmm. uh, because it was exactly that, an occupation. It was a job. Yeah. Um, but I will also say that once you get promoted, you stop doing the physical work of a combat photographer mm-hmm. and you fall into the role of just taking care of soldiers, being an administrator, uh, oh, okay. doing um, strategic planning. So at that point, you become like a, a COO um, mm-hmm. of an organization when it comes to your piece of the pot. You have to organize everything. But in my case, um, I had a lot of diverse uh, training mm-hmm. and I love teaching. Yeah. Uh, so, and of course, as the army maps out things, they want you to get your degree uh, so that you can be marketable when you get out. Me, myself, mm-hmm. I'm starting my own business. Um, I'm actually, I've already started my own business. So mm-hmm. I do photo and video because it's not only an occupation for me, but it's also a passion of mine. I like that. Um, so what's your, what's your business called? My business is called K and L Imagery. K and L Imagery, y'all. Don't worry, we're going to put all of that information down <laughs> in the description, so you will be able to reach out to him. You will be able to book him. So, Kyron, what kind of things are you photographing or videographering, if you will? Um. So basically, I love telling stories. I really, okay. really love telling stories. Mm-hmm. Um. And being at the Army uh, taught me everything from basic portraits to forensic photography. Wow. Where we went around the world and did repatriations, um, almost like set things set up like a crime scene, mm-hmm. um, all the way to presidential inaugurations. I pretty oh, wow. much done it all. So yeah. you just have to learn how to tell a story. And people don't even know how rich their story is. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it, I feel it's my job to sit people down and say, hey, no, you your life is more uh, than what you're saying it is. And it's for me to kind of bring that out. Um, so basically storytelling in two forms, storytelling in, um, in uh, still imagery and mm-hmm. then storytelling in motion imagery, which is video. Okay. So small, short, you know, quasi documentaries, um, mm-hmm. going beyond just uh, uh, documenting or not documenting, but taking pictures of a wedding. Sure. To tell the story. Yeah. Uh, those two loves came together um, mm-hmm. and probably one of the most passionate things I'm um, things I'm most passionate about is uh, people telling their family story yeah. and, and, and and I want to bring that to people because we have so much control but when you look at it in the, in the past it mm-hmm. seems like we didn't have control over our own story that's true um, so yeah and high quality imagery. So when, when, I, when I'm doing something, what I would just consider simple, mm. it looks like a documentary. Other people are like, nah, that's too <laughs> much for me. That's too fancy. I'm like, no, this is normal and you can yeah. have it. <laughs> so, that's right, that's right. Yeah. And that is why we're gonna make sure everybody has your information. We want them to be able to reach out to you. And you all, if you all are enjoying the conversation, make sure you do reach out to him. And also make sure that you book him for something that you need to have um, video videoed or even still shots of because how many of us don't have pictures of ourselves or our families and those ever popular kids photos we have kids photos when our kids are small but when they get in their 20s for some reason grandmas i'm telling y'all take down them baby pictures and get new pictures of your grandkids they will appreciate you hey while you're here also don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel and give us a thumbs up we really appreciate it but kyron my friend before I let you go, we have to play our game. 
Okay, let's go. Let's go. I love right. games. This, this game is called This or That. It's pretty simple. I'm going to give you the choice of two things and you, off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. You ready to play? I'm ready. Let's go. Here we go. <laughs> Flowers or plants? Plants. Mm. Hotel or tent? Hotel. Me too. Ugh. Water park or amusement park? Um, amusement park, I guess. I'm not sure. Do you not know yeah, or you uh, don't care? <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of over both of them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> okay. Practical Joker or don't play with me like that? Practical Joker. I can totally see that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Candlelight or Moonlight? Let's go with uh, Moonlight. Very nice. Very nice. Planner or just play it, play it or wing it as we go? Plan to be spontaneous. I like that. Plan to be <laughs> spontaneous. Is that an oxymoron? Anyway, move on. <laughs> go all day or I need a nap. All day. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. In your speaking, is it pecan or pecan? Pecan. Yeah, I know, right? When you, need, when you meet somebody, what do you notice first? Their eyes or their smile? Smile. Uh, so are you a words of affirmation person or an acts of a service person words of affirmation yeah me too and finally what would you tell your younger self now i would ooh, i would tell my younger self now take more chances at the big things in life oh that's good take more chances at the big things in life that sounds like a whole nother interview and who knows we'll get there. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate it. And as usual, we'll see you next time on Extra.